Hello there, my name is Daniel Metra. Uh, welcome to the video. And uh, a very happy new year. Um, this is my first video of 2019. And um, and say so I've just gone out and brought this. Uh, it's the spiteful brake van, uh, brand new in the Batman range. Um, it's been announced for over a year now, but uh, say so they finally bought it out and I finally got it. And I got this from a shop called uh, Tootley Thomas. And um, Tootley Thomas also have a Facebook page, and on Facebook, as a bit of a joke. Um, the owner put that he separated uh, the spiteful brake van from Douglas to be on the safe side, which I thought was quite funny, obviously, as uh, Douglas ended up destroying the brake van in the end. Um, but yeah, this is the packaging that it comes in. So this is, I say, newer type. This packaging has been out for nearly two years now. Different style of packaging. Um, and it says on the top there, rolling stock. Um, it's a shame that it doesn't actually say what character it is. Um, then if you turn over, there's a list of all the other ones you can buy. A little barcode at the bottom there. Um, and what amazes me as well is um, that it's in plastic. And um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, everyone was doing their bit um, about plastic, mainly because of David Attenborough last year when he'd done his documentary explaining about the dangers of plastic in the uh, oceans and to wildlife. Um, so like I said, this still comes in a lot of plastic. And I mean, I'm not going to get throw this plastic away. I'm going to keep hold of it. Because um, what I do is I cut round the boxes and so it's like a bit of a flap. So it just flaps over so that I can keep it. So I mean, I'm not going to throw it in the bin, but yeah, that's a lot of plastic there. Still. And I do prefer the older Hornby style of packaging. Um, I think it's a bit more protected than the cardboard and polystyrene. As I said a few minutes ago, uh, David Attenborough has done um, a lot for this country, I suppose, really. Uh, doing his documentaries and that, and uh, raising awareness about plastic. I mean, I suppose really it's something that I never really um, thought about really as such. Although obviously I was aware that rubbish, um, you know, was a danger to wildlife. Um, but I don't think it's really down to David Attenborough to really um, do anything about it as such, or all of us. I think the government should be, uh, you know, tackling these uh, companies and helping them to find new ways, um, you know, that are more, should we say, eco-friendly. Um, you know, because if you think about it, plastic is a huge part of our daily lives. And I mean, where I work, um, you know, they've done a lot of things. Now they use, um, you know, there's like these disposable wooden spoons, um, you know, and paper plates and things like that now instead of all these plastic items. So, you know, things that could be recycled or used again, um, you know. But like I said, obviously back then still using plastic. Another thing about Backman as well is um, I saw a photo online um, of someone that brought one of these and it's split in half and I know, um, you know, I've seen a few other people on Twitter and online and that have had problems um, with their Backman engines as soon as they get them out of the box. I mean, so far, um, touch wood, um, I've not had any issues with any of my um, Backman uh, trains or trucks or any, say, rolling stock in general. Um, all of mine have been fine. More or less. I mean, I've had issues with them, but not when I've brought them brand new. Um, you know, but trains um, in general, like the real things, do need maintenance and that. But the same general, all of mine have been absolutely fine. I've never had any issues. So I guess a touch wood, hopefully I don't. Um, here's something else I've got as well, which I thought you might be interested in seeing, something non-train related. Got this um, Mr Bean DVD. Um, as I said before, I'm a big fan of Mr Bean and I've got all the other DVDs as well. And also I'm a big fan of um, sitcoms like, uh, you know, Only Fools and Horses. Um, you know, a great show and so many uh, relatable characters and that. And um, I've got DVDs here of um, other shows as well. Um, you know, and I think, you know, I, I like to have a hard physical copy to... Um, you know, watch them on, not just watch them on the computer all the while. You know, and obviously with places like HMV, you know, it's not looking very good. But like I said, 
I can't personally remember the last time I bought anything from HMV because I found I found them a bit expensive compared to uh, other places. Um, but like I said, this is the NW brake van. Like I said, I think the packaging's um, fairly okay. Um, and it looks nice, but like I said, it's I don't think it's as good as the old uh, Hornby ones, as I've said before. So as I said, um, yeah, I got this from uh, Toothley Thomas. Um, I've got a Facebook page as well, um, as, well as a website. So I, so I recommend you check out both of them. Um, when I was in Rushton today, I also had a look at the uh, railway station that's there. Um, you know, that's quite nice. And around Rushton, there's quite a few uh, other nice shops, uh, including Asda. Um, you know, I had a look at their Thomas range, uh, that was quite good. And a toy shop called Osborne's, a family run business, um, you know, and there's also like, a factory shop. And say so lots and lots to see at Amherst, and not just the uh, big names like W. H. Smiths and things like that. Although that's obviously quite nice um, as well to look in, in my opinion. But yeah, quite a nice little town with lots of uh, shops um, to look at. And as for the Mr. Bean DVD, um, I got that from a shop in Wellingborough called Home Bargains um, in the Swansgate Centre. But as I was saying a few minutes ago, um, I recommend you look at the Toothley Thomas website. They've got lots of different um, items, um, you know, and they've got a sale on the minute as well, to my knowledge. Um, and then next month as well, back when should actually be even... Um, basically saying um, what items are going to release this year, although we'll probably end up waiting for about a year like we normally do. Um, they still haven't released Rusty yet, uh, the diesel engine. And in some ways, you know, I hope um, other characters like uh, Samson, Harvey, Millie, um, and Daisy, and uh, Ryan, uh, you know, I'd love it if Backman made them, really. But uh, like I said, I don't know what they're going to release. I suppose just going to have to wait and see. Um, so the thing is with Batman, so they do take uh, ages to release their items, but they say once they do release them, I think they always look really good and really well detailed. Um, so I'm going to get this out of the box, um, and I'll show you it more in detail and share my views. Um, just looking at it now without even taking it out of the box, I can tell you a few things already, but uh, like I said, I'll take it out of the box, uh, and then I'll show you. So uh, I've now got this out of the box, 
Um, I've also had a little play of it in the uh, lounge on the floor on my layout. Well, layout, sort of test track really. Um, I haven't actually got, got a layout yet, but I do intend to get one for the future. Um, but like I said, I've got it out of the box now. And um, obviously if you follow me on Twitter, um, you'll know that I meant, that, um, obviously I shared uh, photos of this when I got it. And um, I shared it with a few of my friends on Facebook on uh, Messenger. And um, a lot of people's first reaction was, um, he looks just like he does in the Railway series. Um, I do sort of agree with that, because he's got the um, grey colour and NW lettering on his side like he did in the Railway series. Um, however, um, he shared two different bases. Um, in the Railway series, he was based on a 20-ton LNER brake van, um, as you can see here. And um, I've also got this in the wooden range, and that's more that looks more like that. However, it doesn't have buffers, um, so that's more closer to the Railway series. Um, the Urtel one, which I also have both uh, in the box and out of the box, looks uh, completely different. Um, Saying so in the um, TV series, he was more based upon um, a BR twenty ton van, as you can see here. Um, and also in the TV series, he didn't have the NW lettering on his side. So apart from that, and obviously you've got this little bit that sticks out, and like I say, it's a different basis. It does look like um, it did in the um, Railway series, but like I said, also the TV series as well. Um, and I think the face is really good. Um, I do think the face is really small, though, but the face is really good. Um, looks just like his face uh, in the TV series. Um, I and say so he was only actually in the episode Break Man. I mean, when I was younger, I used to think he was in um, the episode of Close Shave, where Duck um, crashed into the barber shop. Because um, when the trucks broke away, you can see a breakdown of a face on it, as you can see in this photo here. But it, it turned out not to be um, that. It just turned out to be another breakdown of a face. Um, his face, however, did appear on one of the troublesome trucks in another Series 2 episode afterwards. So maybe in the TV series, um, he maybe he was turned into a truck. Um, it's ever a break fan, I, I don't know. But in the Railway series, um, obviously to my knowledge, he was scrapped um, after his accident when Douglas crushed him. Um, so he first appeared, um, obviously when Don and Douglas first came um, to the island of Sodor. And in the um, Railway series, um, Donald and Douglas painted black and later on painted blue. Um, however, in the TV series, they uh, remain black. Uh, Donald and Douglas also now appear fairly regularly in the CGI series of the show. Um, and like I said, there's, al there's always been quite a difference, I think, between both the TV series and the uh, Railway series, in a way. But obviously, as you know, Donald and Douglas um, were allowed to stay in the end. Um, after, despite their accidents with the brake van, and obviously Donald um, crashed into the signal box as well, which I thought was quite funny. Um, and also here he's got silver buffers, um, so whereas in the TV series they were black, um, but it's a little bit like Toad the brake van. He had black buffers originally, and then when he came back to the CGI series, um, he was they were painted silver. Um, so a bit more realistic, I suppose, to the Railway series in a way. Um, the NW Rake van's not the only van with a face. Like I said, there was Toad and also Bradford. Um, and it's nice to have the back... I think it's really nice that Backman have made another one um, that has a face. And, I mean, with this one as well, it doesn't matter. You, when it's travelling along, you can have it, have it facing backwards or you can have it facing them forwards. Um, so it doesn't really matter, to be honest with you. Um, but like I said, I'm absolutely delighted they brought this one out. Um, I say, and this is the HO double O gauge um, range. I say this is HO, but like I say, it can go either. Obviously, it goes with double O gauge engines. Um, it's also in the G scale range, um, which is the really large ones. Um, the only one I've got so far is Winston. But I do hope to get more in the future. But again, it's sort of a gradual thing, really. And I mean, they are expensive, and I'm not got lots and lots of money. But gradually, over time, I get, I will get them. So this is the uh, test run. First time I've actually run this. 
Um, I thought we'd get Rosie pulling it by um, herself to begin with. Um, as you can see, the brake pan's facing forwards at the minute, but you can face it either way, it doesn't really matter. But obviously in real life, you'd have to change the uh, lamps on it so it's got the right head code. But here's the moment of truth. Like I said, nothing's gone wrong with me before. Would have helped if it was in the right direction, but never mind. So uh, I've now got Duck the Great Western engine and the spiteful brake fans on the back. I um, haven't run this Duck for a while, um, and say, but Duck's um, quite a good engine and he knows how to keep the trucks in order. So uh, you know, fingers crossed, that nothing will go wrong on this trip for him. So I think you'll agree from that that this model runs really well indeed. Um, most of the time there's never any issues with rolling stock. Um, you know, as, as I said earlier, I've been quite lucky with my um, buys when I bought things brand new. There's not been issues. I know other people have had issues, obviously looking on social media and that. Um, but I've never had uh, any as such um, from buying them brand new. Um, and when giving this a score... I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but I honestly found it really hard to score because I say I thought it's, I think it's a really good model overall. Um, but I decided, I mean, say because this is sort of based upon what it looked like in both the Railway series and the TV series, um, you know, and also, like I said, I think earlier, I think the face is a bit too small. I'd have I'd have liked a bit of a bigger face. But I do think the face at the same time does look very good, has very good detail, and looks just like it did in the TV series. So um, I decided to give this an 8.5 out of 10. I think that was a reasonable sort of score. Um, but like I said, I do really like it. So it was quite hard to make a decision. But like I said, it's definitely somewhere up there at the top, but not quite there for me to give a 10 out of 10. 
and like I said, all my views that I share are my own views, you know, not based upon anyone else's. Um, it's how I solely feel about the model. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and uh, till next time, goodbye, and uh, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>